So we're at Coventry uh, on Monday morning where we're going to be live on the uh, BBC Coventry and Warwickshire Breakfast Show. Um, I think they've picked up on a little bit of the, the publicity we've had over the last couple of weeks. Obviously quite a lot going on. We were obviously on Channel 4 with Guy Martin's D-Day landing which was a huge success on the 2nd of June and seemed to have got some great feedback from that. And then obviously we rolled straight on into the 75th anniversary of D-Day and, and all of the coverage that went with that. So. A lot of the team have been pretty busy with that actually one way or, or another sort of you know helping maintain the aircraft and, and keep them airworthy for the celebrations and, and indeed flying them so yeah a little bit quiet on, on the night fright front over the last few weeks but um, certainly we've had a lot of coverage and I think the guys at BBC Coventry and Warwickshire have picked up on that 20 past 8 on Monday morning sort of chat through to them about what we're doing here at Coventry and with the night fright team and Heritage Air Services so a little bit more publicity for the project which is um, which is great really. BBC Coventry and Warwickshire. 21 minutes past eight now. The C-47 Douglas Skytrain, better known as the Dakota. Well, a seven-year restoration project on one of the iconic aircraft is underway at Coventry Airport. You might have seen it featured in the Channel 4 programme, Guy Martin's D-Day landings recently. Uh, well, Richard Williams is living the dream at the airport this morning with the man behind the project, Charlie Walker. Richard, do not go anywhere near the cockpit. We have done a risk assessment. I, I, I tell you what, I, I don't know if you can hear that. We've just climbed up here. We're in one of those three big hangars here at Coventry Airport. And guess where I'm standing, Trish? I am standing in the fuselage of the Dakota plane. And Charlie with me. Charlie, this plane, it looks incredible. Yeah, it's certainly getting there, isn't it? It's a, it's a pretty special aeroplane. It's got a, got a lot of history. So, yeah, you're standing in the back of a, a C-47, um, Chris and Night Fright. So we found this aeroplane in, in a scrapyard in Arkansas in the United States at the back end of 2012. And, um, yeah, our goal is to restore it and get it back to genuine sort of World War II C-47 specification and, and have it flying as soon as possible as a memorial to the, to the men and women that served and lost their lives for our freedom. And that's it, wasn't it? If it's in terms of the D-Day landings, paratroopers would have jumped out of this plane and your intention is to have people jumping out the plane again because you're a commercial pilot yeah so it's a yeah i'm a commercial pilot and i'll definitely be flying night fright as soon as she's ready i, I, I can't wait but you're right this actual aircraft took part in every major um, airborne mission throughout the second world war be that d-day market garden right the rhine crossing you know it, it dropped paratroopers and, and towed gliders on d-day itself so yeah we want to make it as accurate as as we can in terms of the restoration and get guys jumping out again well listen I, you've got to take me for a tour come on you actually put some boards down because there's no floor i'll let you lead so yeah, we're at the back of the plane now aren't we? yeah. So we're, gonna... so we're at the back, so, so let me talk you through it a little bit. So there's a lot of work to do, but up in the back of the aeroplane here, there would have been a cable that would have run from the from the front to the back, and that's where the guys would have hooked up their static line. And the door was open. So yeah, you'd hear the guys, they'd say, hook up, they hook up, and then they'd walk back like this, they'd stand in the door, yep. and, and then one by one that they'd jump out. So And have... I was speaking to a paratroop in the pub the other day, and he was saying it was like responsibility to check the backpack of the one in front of you. Yeah, absolutely, you kind of buddy up if you like, which I think is still something they do in the military today, so you're each responsible for checking your mate. Oh, but... now Trish said I can't go in it, but you know what? Sometimes you have to be overruled oh, no, and going in. No. But yeah, so, so up here you, you okay. had, had the two pilots, obviously the, the captain and the co-pilot in the front. You'd had a radio operator and a navigator. And on board this particular aircraft is a pretty special story, really. There was actually a, a dog called Hap that travelled right from the United States with the crew and, and flew th throughout the war on every major airborne mission and went back to the States afterwards, a, a spaniel called Hap. So pretty unusual. And, uh, a cool the here. dog was on here? Yeah, it sat under the navigator's chair here. But, um, <laughs> what, this he, chair here? Yeah, this chair. There'd have been a chair here, a little table where they would have had all their maps. With the maps and stuff, but, yeah. Probably easier to see from the outside, but it suffered, you know, probably over 100 hits on, on the second D-Day mission. There's a, a 20 millimeter cannon hole just up here somewhere that just there. passed just under the under the navigator's head. So, yeah, a lot of battle scars. Well, pretty... What's it going to be like when you're sitting here? I mean, we've got the controls here. When the seats go in and you taxi out onto the runway for the first time and you going to fly it? It's going to be a, a pretty special day, yeah. We, we can't wait, to be honest. I mean, obviously, we've been working hard since 2012. The idea was to have this aircraft ready for the 75th anniversary of the D-Day landings, which is obviously has just passed. So, sadly, we didn't make that. But it's going to be a special day when we do get it ready. And hopefully that will be um, September or, or maybe if we, if we slip a little bit towards the end of the year. But we can't wait. I was going to say, I was been saying to Trish this morning, um, my dad was in the RAF and he actually flew in a Dakota and he's got pictures of it. And that's the thing, it's, it was so well used, the plane wasn't in terms of military after the Second World War as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's sort of testament to design, really, isn't it? I mean, there's probably a few hundred of these aircraft still flying, you know, mainly in sort of America, Southern America and Africa, and they still use them commercially. But if you think about it, it was, you know, an aeroplane that sort of served throughout the Second World War and then probably went on to start commercial aviation as we know it, really. What's in the back bit there? Just can I have a look? 
Yes, was that, would that have been right where the gun would be? No, 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 there'd be no guns except the, the guns that the paratroopers were carrying themselves. Oh, okay. and in fact, that's what, if you see little plug holes in the windows there, that's what they would have done. They would have stuck the guns out of those windows and wow. re returned fire, if you like. But, yeah, through the back, there would have been a, a toilet or a latrine, as the Americans called it, and then sort of further back, that's sort of all the, all the flight control cables, really. That's where, where, where they live. And then, as well, obviously, the wings aren't on there at the moment, but that's obviously the next thing to do, is it? Yeah, that's the next thing. You can see over there, lent against the racking, there's a, there's a set of wings over there, which we've still got quite a bit of work to do, too. But, um, How do you yeah, find the parts for it because you've rescued uh we've we've found parts here on ebay on facebook in bolivia in america i've been i've spent 10 days in canada stripping parts off another airplane you, you name it we found we found them oh listen i'll tell you what it's absolutely fantastic when do you hope to have it up in the sky well well hopefully september that's the deadline for the 75th anniversary of market garden but if not towards the end of the year for sure there you go well listen can i come back and fly in it absolutely no. yeah, i've got it in trish no, i've no, got it in no. yeah come on <laughs> It's all don't for professional. We're going to be making a radio package to be. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't do it, Charlie. Don't do it. Uh, thanks very much, Richard Williams. Uh, we'll put the pictures on our Facebook page. Looks fantastic, doesn't it? 26 minutes past eight here on Breakfast with Trish Trouble.